Hey guys, welcome back to Kansas Apples by Abba. Hope you're all keeping yourself safe from this virus. I just got back from Puerto Rico, hence the braids, and felt safe under our UV masks in the plane and just safe precautions taken by pretty much everyone in Puerto Rico. Being vaccinated also gave us an assurance that we were doing what we could to protect ourselves and those around while having a good time. Stay safe. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell so that you are alerted when I put out new videos. Sorry it's been such a while since my last video, but I was busy with QA, quality assurance. Assuring quality, which I hope to touch on soon in future videos. It's a very significant part of what I do as a medical physicist. In my what is MIP video, definitely check it out if you haven't already, I asked a question. I was expecting folks to respond in the comment section, but you all were too shy. Anyways, I asked whether you could determine what MINIP was based on how I explained MIP. Since I haven't heard back, I decided to just explain it before you started to develop your own ideas. So just to summarize, MIP stands for Maximum Intensity Projection. So one of the ways it's useful to us in this field of radiation therapy is that it serves to project the maximum intensities associated with different points in a patient's breathing cycle onto a single data set. This way we end up seeing the full extent of motion of the tumor in a single data set. So in other words, if a patient's tumor moves while they breathe, we get a picture of the extent to which the tumor moves so we don't miss the tumor when we try to radiate it. So what's different about MINIP? So in MINIP, we pretty much are trying to reach the same goal of not missing the tumor as it moves while it's being radiated. The difference here is that instead of the tumor being denser than its surrounding tissue, like in the case of lung tumors, this time the tumor is less dense than its surrounding tissue, like in liver tumors. Remember, on CT, more dense tissue appears brighter and less dense tissue appears darker. So in the case of a liver tumor, for example, which tends to be less dense than its surrounding liver tissue, we use MINIP, which stands for Minimum Intensity Projection, to project the minimum intensities from a group of CT data that has been collected throughout a patient's breathing cycle. This way, we're able to capture the full extent of motion of the less dense lesion as the patient breathes. So what happens if you accidentally perform a MINIP calculation on a lung tumor or MIP calculation on a liver tumor, as in you swap the two? Well, the tumor can pretty much vanish. Yes, it can disappear. I'll leave this up to you to ponder. So if you're a therapist and you're wondering which data set you need to transfer to the treatment planning station, MIP, MINIP, don't look too far. Just ask, is the tumor more dense or less dense than its surroundings? More dense means it appears brighter on CT and MIP is more appropriate. A less dense tumor means it appears darker on CT than its surrounding tissue and MINIP is more appropriate. If in doubt, just transfer both.